Hello, and welcome to Dashboard. Uh, after you've connected your AWS account with uh, Dashboard, it will take about 20 minutes before you'll start seeing data being imported. So in the meantime, let me show you a quick walkthrough of some of the uh, settings and things that you should know. So first, if we're gonna go up here, click on your settings down here, and we're gonna go to import. What this is gonna allow you to do is filter for which uh, functions you want to import or block out. So let's say we want only development logs. So let's first do a catch all. Name includes, catch all, and you can put your region here, save. And then let's exclude anything that's dev. Now you see here, it automatically filtered out any of the development uh, functions out, and it will only import data from these. We can hit save, and that will take effect in also in about 20 minutes if you've done this after you've already started set, uh, submitting data. So while we're in the settings, let's also look at how you could add more users. Simply click the user tab, go to add user, and right here it will send them an email uh, with all their login details. You could also remove, deactivate right here, different users. Now, I'll show get to the alerting, but while we're in the settings, let's show the notifications. Here's how you could set different notification channels uh, to the alerts. So if you wanna do email, you just do email, add your email, and save. If you wanna add a Slack channel, just add Slack, Click Add to Slack. And it will ask for the permissions and for you to choose the channel. So let's head over to the errors. Now errors are errors as defined by AWS. So a crash, a timeout, an early exit, a cold start, things like that. So when you click on errors, you get to this dashboard. And this is actually more of like a to-do list. So each time an error comes up, it's actually only gonna alert you one time. So it doesn't uh, flood your channel. So one time per error, per function. So what's gonna happen is you'll come in here and you'll look at the error, you'll see the stack trace, you'll see the occurrences, and you could open them up and uh, with a click and look at it here. And if you have X-ray enabled, it will show you the stack trace and everything. But it's not actually gonna alert you again until you check the box and hit resolve. Once you hit resolve, it goes away and it won't. And then it will alert you again once, you, uh, once it comes up again. Now if it's something that you don't want to hear over and over again, you can click on it and hit mute. And then that goes into the muted tab and it won't show up again. You could unmute it by clicking here, unmute. So let's look at how to add new policies. So you click on policies, you can click add to add one, and then you have here your channels, how you're going to be alerted, and your conditions. So you could choose what uh, targets you want, if you want all your functions, if you want a specific group of functions, or an individual function. And alert me on any new error, crash, timeout, out of memory, and so on. And so you could create different policies for different uh, uh, errors depending on if you want different groups to be notified. So let's go into alerting, which is very similar. You'll have your list here. You go to policies and you can create the different policies. So some good examples is this one. Like if I get too many errors, I want to be alerted when there's more than a, a hundred on average in the last 15 minutes. Or you could do it if it's too, too long. So if the duration is uh, above 150 milliseconds over the last five minutes for a particular function then, or invocation, then alert to you. If you have over three cold starts in the last minute, then to let you know. Another one people use a lot is memory usage. So if you have over 85% in the last 15 minutes, it will let you know that you need to go into the next, uh, the next level. Now you could also do the opposite is below, let's say, 15%. So if this is normally running at less than 15%, maybe you're paying for too much memory and you could actually save money there. 
And another really good thing to do is cost. So if the invocation's cost is above, let's say, $100 on average in the last five minutes to alert you. And then that way, if there's something that's stuck in a loop, it will automatically alert you so that you don't have a huge AWS bill at the end. Let's go to Lambda Functions. This is just to look at all your functions that you have. And you could choose the different uh, functions here and see the list of invocations. So for this timeout function, we're going to go to Anomalies. And you could actually just get a list of all the different anomalies or retries or cold starts. And so that allows you to really go in and dive in deep see what's going on here and if you want to take it into CloudWatch you could just push this if you want to copy uh, the the log file you could just push this copy file let's go into project views this is great if you have a lot of different functions and different teams working on different uh, aspects you could create a new project view put the title and put what functions you want added to that and let's just go to this one Mickey Mouse and then each that project will get its own dashboard that you could have all the information here for those that group and you could change it to put it on auto refresh right here so you could actually stick this up onto a big TV now let's go look at live tailing if you're trying to pinpoint something that's going on, you could do live tailing. You could choose up to three different functions. And they'll start showing up here as, they'll, as they come. Now this is a demo account, it's not gonna show anything. Let's go to search. Let's say we want to look for uh, something with dev in it and in any function and we don't want errors we only want success we want the last 24 hours and search this will pull up everything right here and also a nice graph now that about does it on the basics of this program i uh, hope you really like it if you have any questions you can just reach out to us on the live chat down here in the bottom right just click here you can open a new conversation with us and speak with us at any time thanks